we do need to raise the debt ceiling to avoid economic calamity. We should not get to the point where we need to consider whether the president can go on uh, issuing debt. This would be a constitutional crisis. What to do if Congress fails to meet its responsibility? There are simply no good options. And tomorrow, President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy will meet face to face for the first time since that February meeting. They are negotiating the debt ceiling. Joining me right now is the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget's President, Maya McGinnis. Maya, thanks very much for being here. I want to talk to you about this uh, deal that passed the House and what happens in the Senate. That, to me, is the breaking news of the morning. Mike Lee told me yesterday he's got the votes to ensure that there will be spending cuts uh, as well as a debt ceiling. Raise. But first, give us your reaction to Janet Yellen this weekend. Secretary Yellen's exactly right. I mean, she's kind of a no nonsense, put out the reality there. One, the debt ceiling could, we could hit the X date sooner than we had thought. It could be early June. We shouldn't find out. It may stretch until July, but the point is we should get this done well in advance. We should have gotten it done quite some time ago. Two, we shouldn't be having these discussions about whether the 14th Amendment protects us or should we have trillion-dollar coins or all of these things. There is a priority here, and that is to left, lift the debt ceiling. And I would argue it is also the opportunity to look at whether we need to have savings in our budget. And I think clearly, given the fiscal situation, we do. So how to also get that done? without the drama that we already seem to be enmeshed in with two sides fighting this out. There's two big objectives. Lift the debt ceiling. It's an absolute non-negotiable. And let's figure out how to get some savings done in the budget, which is something that both the president and Speaker McCarthy have said that that's important in, in the kinds of packages they put forth in the president's budget and the McCarthy offer. Right. Well, look, I've seen your writing and your reports after the deal that McCarthy uh, was able to pass in the House. But now it's up to the Senate. And Utah Senator Mike Lee joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures to tell us that he's got the votes to ensure that a bill raising the debt limit uh, without spending cuts will not pass. Watch this. As Kevin McCarthy, as the Speaker of the House, meets with the White House, it's imperative that he arrive in a position of negotiating power. We've now got 43 Republicans who have signed a letter, two more uh, who, who have said they would stand with us uh, while not signing the letter, to refuse to bring debate to a close on any clean debt ceiling increase bill. They can't do this. We've now got more than enough to stop exactly the kind of legislation that Joe Biden wants. What that means is that the White House is going to have to come to the table and enter into real talks with the House Republicans, starting with Speaker Kevin McCarthy. What are your thoughts, Maya? Can President Biden unilaterally make a deal with uh, the con congressional leadership tomorrow, or will he push back? Because up until now, you know what he's said. He has said it's non-negotiable. I'll talk to Kevin McCarthy, but not about raising the debt ceiling, that he doesn't want any strings attached to any raise in the debt ceiling, Maya. I think they could get it done tomorrow. This is something we've known about for months and months and months. But the way Washington works is nothing gets done until the absolute last minute. And when it comes to the debt ceiling, that's the absolute opposite way of how it should get done. But I think it's pretty clear what we could get done. We have to lift the debt ceiling. Democrats would like to say that was separate from a package of, of savings. Republicans would like to say it's together. OK, they can both describe it the way they want to. We also have to negotiate how we're going to fund next year's levels of spending. That's in the discretionary portion of the budget. We're going to have to bring discretionary spending down from where it otherwise would be. That will generate savings. And then the part that both parties are trying to ignore, but we really should address, is we should put out some kind of a commission or an agreement that we're also going to look at the big drivers of our national debt, retirement, health care and revenues, and have a kind of commission that's going to study how to deal with inflation, economic growth, those big drivers of the debt. I would also suggest we need to reform the debt ceiling because we can't have this kind of drama over and over. So I think the parameters of a deal that makes sense and will meet everybody's needs are there. And I think what's unfortunate is we will probably have to hash this out and fight about this until the absolute last minute, which isn't reassuring to anybody in this country or those of us who watch us around the world that our governance structures are operating as they should. We shouldn't create this yeah. kind of drama. We yeah. should be able to be good stewards of our economy and our fiscal situation. Yeah, that's not the reality that we face, unfortunately. You're talking about the it drivers of the debt, Maya. Those are the very things that 
President Biden said were wacko ideas, okay? Cutting things like entitlement, he said, were wacko, extremist, and mega Republican. But, Maya, I want to get your take on two things that I see are, I think, are a little bit like gimmicks in this bill that passed the House. Number one, okay, Kevin McCarthy says he's going to raise the debt ceiling until March of next year. Really? Do we really want to go through this again in March of 2024? Why would you raise it just until March 24, right? And then the second thing is he's got, he's got a cap on spending by 1% increases for the next 10 years. I don't know, Maya. To me, that sounds unrealistic, specifically when you talk about defense spending as well. Were these things, do you think, just gimmicks to get Biden to the table? I don't think those are long-lasting ideas, do you? Well, Maria, I absolutely agree with you. I don't know if they were gimmicks, if they were negotiating points. I, I don't know what everybody is bringing in terms of their strategy. But I think those are things that change, should change. We should lift the debt ceiling till after the election. We can't keep going through this until we can resolve this without trauma. And frankly, we should reform the debt ceiling so that if you lift it, you lift it at the same time you're passing legislation that borrows. Everybody who has passed bills and signed on to bills that increased borrowing is therefore responsible for lifting the debt ceiling. And separating these two doesn't make sense. We should lift it for a long time right now, and we should reform it. And I agree with you, discretionary caps, we should have them in place. However, they need to be realistic, because what we saw over the past decade, which is, is that caps that are too strict, everybody comes together and, does, and runs around them, and that's not good for budgeting either. So let's find some numbers that we can actually stick to, either for two or five or 10 years at reasonable levels, and there you are going to find the sweet spot that I think could be a deal. Yeah. I mean, clawing back the COVID money is a great idea. I mean, w you know, yep. why wouldn't we do that, right? But that's not going to move yep. the needle, is it, Maya? No, that's a small amount. And one thing I've been yeah. thinking is we probably do need to have a short-term debt ceiling increase. You could claw back the COVID money right then and do a short-term debt ceiling increase, giving them space to negotiate on the budget before the end of the fiscal year, and then lift the debt ceiling. I think that might help out. All right. Maya, always great to talk with you. Always fantastic ideas from your group. Maya McGinnis, always a pleasure. Thank you so much.